Hi, I'm Gagan. Understanding recovery metrics like RPO, RTO, WRT, and MTD is crucial for passing your certification exams like CISSB and essential for your success as a cybersecurity professional. Before we dive into these metrics, remember they are how business leaders define acceptable risk and guide cybersecurity investments. When you use these metrics in your planning, you show how security supports business goals making it easier to get the resources needed to protect the organization. Let's start with MTD or maximum tolerable downtime. This is arguably the most important metric and should be determined first in your planning process. MTD answers the question, what is the absolute maximum amount of time a business process can be unavailable before causing severe harm to the organization? This isn't a technical measurement. It's a business decision that considers financial impact, reputational damage, regulatory consequences, and customer impacts. For example, an e-commerce platform might determine their MTD is four hours during business hours, because beyond that point, they will lose customers permanently to competitors. But for a hospital's electronic medical record system, the MTD might be just 20 minutes before patient care is severely compromised. When electronic medical records are unavailable, clinicians can't access critical patient information, delaying vital clinical decisions and treatment plans. This can quickly lead to a life-threatening situations, regulatory violations, and millions in liability. MTD serves as the ultimate boundary for all your recovery planning. Every other metric we will discuss must fit within this limit. Now let's talk about RTO, recovery time objective. RTO is the maximum acceptable time to restore systems and applications after an incident. It answers the question, how quickly must we get our systems back online? RTO starts at the moment of disruption and ends when your systems are restored and available. However, and this is crucial, available doesn't always mean fully operational. Your database might be online, but is it accessible to users? is all functionality restored. This is where WRT or work recovery time, which we will cover next, becomes essential. It bridges the gap between available and fully operational. Different systems will have different RTOs based on their criticality. Your authentication servers might have an RTO of one hour, while the company blog might have an RTO of 24 hours or more. When setting RTOs, remember they must always be shorter than your MTD. If your business can only tolerate eight hours of downtime, which is your MTD, your RTO must be significantly less than that. This brings us to WRT, work recovery time, one of the most frequently overlooked metrics in disaster recovery planning. WRT is the time required after systems are restored to complete additional tasks necessary for full business functionality. It answers the question, after systems are back online, how long until we are fully operational? These tasks might include data validation, testing critical functions, manual data entry for transactions recorded during the downtime, and notifying users that systems are operational. For example, after restoring a financial system, you might need an additional two hours to verify transactions integrity before allowing users back in. And here's a critical formula to remember. RTO plus WRT must be less than MTD. So your total recovery time can't exceed what the business can tolerate. Finally, let's discuss RPO, recovery point objective. While the previous metrics focus on time to recovery, RPO focuses on data loss. It answers the question, how much data can we afford to lose? RPO is measured in time. It could be 15 minutes, 4 hours, 24 hours, and determines your backup frequency. An RPO of 1 hour means your backup strategy must ensure you never lose more than 1 hour's worth of data. For a hospital's electronic medical records, the RPO might be near zero, requiring continuous replication. For marketing analytics database, an RPO of 24 hours might be acceptable. Recovery point objective has significant cost implications. The closer to zero your RPO gets, the more expensive your backup and replication infrastructure becomes. Let's see how these concepts work together through a real world example. 
Imagine a ransomware attack hits your organization at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday. Your organization has determined the MTD for your core business application is 5 hours. This means by 7 p.m. you must be fully operational or face severe business consequences. Your RPO is 30 minutes, so you have backups from 1.30 p.m. This means you will lose at maximum 30 minutes of data. Now your team works to restore systems from backup, completing this by 5 p.m. That's a 3-hour RTO. And after the systems are restored, your team needs an additional hour to validate data integrity and ensure all connections are working. That's a 1-hour WRT. So total downtime is your RT, which is 3 hours, plus work recovery time, which is 1 hour, making it a total of 4 hours. Since your MTD is 5 hours, you have successfully recovered within your tolerance threshold. If your recovery had taken 6 hours, you would have exceeded MTD, potentially causing severe business impact. Here are some practical tips for implementing these metrics in your organization. Start with MTD. Work with your business leaders to determine the maximum tolerable downtime for each critical process. This should come first as it establishes the boundary for all other metrics. You have to be realistic about your RTO. Your RTO must account for all steps in the recovery process from detection to restoration. Test your recovery processes regularly to verify your RTOs are achievable. Don't forget WRT. Many recovery plans fail because they overlook the time needed after technical recovery. Document all post-recovery tasks and include them in your planning. You need to balance RPO and cost. Near zero RPOs are technically possible but can be extremely expensive. Work with your business stakeholders to find the right balance between data loss tolerance and the cost. And finally, document everything. Create clear documentation that lists your RTOs RPOs, WRTs, and MTDs for all critical systems. This documentation is essential during certification audits and actual disaster scenarios. Understanding these four metrics, MTD, RTO, WRT, and RPO, is fundamental to creating effective disaster recovery and business continuity plans. They form the foundation upon which you will build your technical recovery strategies. Remember, MTD is your absolute limit for downtime. RTO is your system restoration time, WRT is your post restoration work time, and RPO is your data loss tolerance. And most importantly, RTO plus WRT must be less than maximum tolerable downtime, or your recovery plan won't meet business needs. Understanding these recovery metrics thoroughly is essential for your cybersecurity career. Take time to internalize how they relate to one another and practice applying them to various scenarios. You will encounter these concepts not only on certification exams, but also throughout your professional journey as you help organizations build resilient systems. I hope you found this helpful. I'll see you in the next cybersecurity video. Thanks.